Hello, we are in chapter six and uh, I'm moving backwards. We just finished chapter seven and seven, we looked at special continuous random variables. In seven one, uh, we looked at the uniform, had a really nice density function, easy to integrate. In section seven two, we looked at the most popular continuous distribution, which is the normal. And then in section 7.3, we looked at the exponential and its relationship to the Poisson and the fact that it has the memoryless property. Um, so we just picked up three specific random variables in chapter 7. And now that we can talk that language, I'm going back to pick up one of the harder sections. Uh, and it, it's nice to already know random variables or have an idea of them before you do 6.2. So that's why I'm going backwards. Um, section 6.2 is finding um, when you have a function of a random variable. So if a random variable is x and you do, you want to look at something like x squared or square root of x or ln of x, we want to figure out how to find the probability density function of this function of a random variable. So sometimes a random variable itself is not particularly what we're interested in. So we might have some random variable x, but what we really care about is some function of x, such as x squared or ln x or sine x. And I just gave some examples below. I won't get really into them, but I mean, for example, maybe you know um, the temperature of um, you know some reaction, and this this temperature is given in Fahrenheit. But you really want to know the distribution. So this is the distribution of temperatures in terms of Fahrenheit. But you really want to know the distribution in terms of y, where y is a linear function of x. So you would want, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is you'd like an f of y function. You would like a distribution for y. Um, maybe you know the distribution for the radius of a circle. And you want to know how... The, the radius being uniform on 0, 1, how that affects the area of the circle because the area is made up of a function of the radius. So there, there are many instances where you would want that. Some of these I have contrived just to show you the methodology, but um, there are reasons you would want a function of a random variable. This, this isn't just out of the blue. Um, I, I, 6.2 is really in two parts. Before we get to figuring out the distribution of a function of a random variable. There are some problems that, you know, have random variable, if, if x is your random variable, um, you might be finding probabilities with expressions of x's in them. So for example, what's the probability? Um, x is going to be uniformly distributed, um, yeah, randomly separate. So I mean, it's uniformly distributed on the interval 0 to 3. Okay, um, what's the probability? that this expression, uh, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is bigger than 0, given we know that f of x is equal to 1 third, that's the uniform on the interval 0 to 3. So knowing that f of x takes on values um, in an interval 0 to 3 equally likely as a third, what's the probability if I have this expression right here that it's going to be bigger than 0? And so I don't really need to get a function of a random variable. I mean, I don't need to find its distribution. Um, I can just work with this expression and try to break it down into statements about x because I know what the distribution of x is. So, so for example, to find the probability that this is bigger than 0, that's the same if I factor the left-hand side to say what's the probability this is bigger than 0. And from calculus or pre-calculus, we know to make two things bigger than zero, both these things have to be positive or both of these things have to be negative. So I look at the two cases here. And um, yeah, I'm just, um, I'm just, why is some, something's kind of bothering me here. Um, yeah, so I could break down, so both of these have to be positive. That's case one. So that would have, oh, okay, I see what I'm doing. So case one, if both of these are positive, then I need x bigger than three and x bigger than two. And for both of those to be, be true, I need x bigger than three. But I, I know this isn't going to happen, actually, because if we go back up there, the support is zero to three, so the probability something's bigger than three is zero. 
case two is both of these need to be negative. So that means x has to be x minus 3 less than 3. So x has to be less than 3 and x has to be less than 2. On this interval, it is possible for x to be less than 2. Now this right here is 0. It's never going to happen. But to be less than 2 on that interval um, happens 2 thirds of the time, right? I mean, this here's 3, you know, 1, 2. To be less than 2 on this interval is 2 thirds of the time. That's why I'm getting 2 thirds. Um, but, but the point is I'm rewriting this expression in terms of x's and then just dealing with um, f of x on whatever scale um, I'm interested in. Here's, here's another example. This is a discrete. Suppose x is a Poisson and I want to find the probability that 3x minus 5 is bigger than 1. I don't need to find the distribution function for this. What I'm going to do is just set this up as an expression in terms of x and then solve um, according to what we've done earlier, you know, throughout the course. So, you know, this, I'm just writing algebra as the same as this, is bigger than, is the same as this. This for a Poisson is easy. I mean, Poisson is discrete. I'm going to sum a Poisson with a lambda of three, that's what this here, bigger than two, Oh, you see, I have a typo here. Um, x bigger than 2, this sh should be starting at 3 to infinity. So, um, yeah. Ooh, okay, mistake. Even down here, since x is a random variable, the probability from x equals 3 to infinity. Sorry about this. This isn't a greater than or equal to. This was a greater than. That needs to be 3. So, typo. Maybe some of you will find that before you even get to the lecture. Um, here's another one. I just, I think, again, this is even a little bit tougher. Um, I know x has an exponential distribution, and I want to know the probability x squared is bigger than 4. For x squared to be bigger than 4, either x is going to be, right, I need, I need, um, I can break this and factor it. I'd be careful. Either I need both of them to be bigger than 2, or both of them to be bigger than negative 2, and I think maybe rewriting it as factor Factor, factoring in it will make it easier than just taking the square root here. So either both of these are positive, that's case one, or both of them are negative. So for this to be true, either this has to happen or this has to happen. The exponential f of x is equal to 3e e to the negative 3x for x bigger than 0, right, has this distribution. So it can be bigger than 2, so here's 1, let's say 2's here, here's the probability. But it's never going to be less than 2 because this is defined for x is bigger than 0. So this thing here is just 0. And uh, I get a probability, and that's the area under the curve from 2 to infinity on the 3e e to the negative 3x, the exponential. So so I hope I hope this is making sense. I mean, maybe if, if I had had a different distribution um, than an exponential, let's say a normal, uh, this might have had some probability associated with it. It just so happens, I mean, just because it's negative doesn't make the probability zero. What makes the probability zero is this particular f of x is only defined for x's that are positive. So, you know, I was kind of making sure down here that you realize um, the problem is based, you know, on the random variable that you have. So, you know, always make sure you understand if f, f, f of x or if x is exponential, you know what f of x looks like. If x is normal, if x is uniform, and then from there you can see, you know, where where that where that function is defined. And uh, I put an important note here because I I think too at this point, I see people getting confused. Like when do I integrate? When do I sum? I'm always looking for the type of distribution. Um, you know, when, when we talk about something's uniform on the interval, negative 3, 4, it's defined on an interval, so it's continuous. Um, otherwise, usually we give the support, like discrete is Poisson, number of events in an interval, um, binomial, hypergeometric, geometric. So always be aware, are you counting or are you integrating over a region? Always be looking, do I have a region or do I have, you know, a random variable where I'm counting number of successes? So... Yeah, there's a lot going on now, so that's that's partly why I'm taking a couple days on this one. So I'm doing the same example as above. I'm trying to find the probability of x squared is bigger than 4.
but this time I have um, f of x is actually um, it's uniform, so one seventh over the interval negative three to four has a height there of one seventh across. But you can see this random variable is defined in here, so it can be negative. So if I go back to this problem in these two cases, um, the case that x is less than negative 2 can happen now, as, as well as the probability x could be bigger than 2. So it changes my answer just based on, you know, I have a new distribution that's defined over a different interval. And you have to figure out where this holds true, you know, for the given interval you have and use the density function that's associated with x. Um, so I did another one of those. I did another. So, so yeah, th this is um, of 6, 2, I think the nicer part because you have an expression with x and you want to isolate your x and then use your density function to figure out when the probability statement will hold true. So, um, you know, if you want more examples, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go on to building the density function um, of a function of a random variable and uh, I made two whiteboard videos today of course it didn't work out which is probably good because I my mom was already sad at that one video she's like at least you could comb your hair um, well that's, that's how it is with moms right so um, maybe at least I can try to comb my hair before I redo it tomorrow and figure out why this always is coming up anyway I hope I hope this helped and I will talk to you soon